Christmas. Good morning, Phoenix Church. It is great to be together. Got uh, some good news I want to bring from the campus. We had, in the last 10 days, two campus students baptized into Christ. One is uh, Sydney Reeves and one is Michael Durling. Not sure if they're both here. One might have gone home. I'm not sure. But if you're here, stand up so we can find you. Sydney, we'll be celebrating your baptism for weeks and weeks. Don't worry about it. She's already stood up a few times. Um, I have a Christmas gift today, and we're going to pass them out at the end, and uh, we've, if you've noticed, we've got some new signage, we've got a new logo, we've got a new name, we've talked about that. Uh, today we're going to be passing out a new, brand new car decals to put on your back, so if we could pop that up, that's an actual picture of it on the back of my car, and uh, I think it looks pretty slick, and I want to thank uh, Jesse Thomas for helping to kind of lay that out and bring it to production. Amen. But I do have a qualifier. Uh, these weren't cheap. These were not like three cents each or anything like that. They were over a dollar each. And so if you are a member, you can have one for every car in your household. Even if you're visiting and you want one, you can have one if you promise to put it on a car. Do not say, just give me a stack, okay? So, I'm just qualifying a little bit here. Afterwards, as you're leaving, the ushers will be handing those out, and we want you to have them for your cars, amen? You know, there are some great spiritual lessons we can learn from people involved in the original Christmas event. And so this morning I want to glean a couple of those lessons. Be turning with me, if you would, to Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 2. And I'm going to read from the Holman Christian Standard this morning, starting in verse 1. We're going to read all the way to verse 35. It says, In those days a decree went out from Caesar Augustus, and the whole empire uh, should be registered. The first registration took place while Quirinius was governing Syria. So every, everyone went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and family line of David to be registered along with Mary, who was engaged to him, and was pregnant. While they were there, the time came for her to give birth. Then she gave birth to her firstborn son, and she wrapped him snugly in cloth and laid him in, the, in a feeding trough, because there was no room at the inn. In the same region, shepherds were staying out in the fields and keeping watch at night over their flock. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Don't be afraid, for look, I proclaim to you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today, a Savior, who is Messiah the Lord, was born for you in the city of David. This will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped snugly in cloth and lying in a feeding trough. Suddenly, there was a multitude of the heavenly hosts with the angel praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and peace on earth to people He favors. When the angels had left them and returned to, the he to heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go straight to Bethlehem and see what has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. They hurried off and found both Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the feeding trough. After seeing them, they reported the message 
they were told about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary was treasuring up all these things in her heart and meditating on them. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had seen and heard, just as they had been told. When the eight days were completed for his circumcision, he was named Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived. And when the days of their purification, according to the law of Moses, were finished, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, just as it is written in the law of the Lord. Every firstborn male will be dedicated to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. There was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to Israel's consolation. And the Holy Spirit was on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he saw the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, he entered the temple complex. When the parents brought in the child, Jesus, to perform for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him uh, took up in his arms, praised God, and said, Now, Master, you can dismiss your slave in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation. You have prepared it. In the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles, and glory to your people Israel. His father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and told his mother Mary, Indeed, this child is destined to cause the fall of and rise of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be opposed. And a sword will pierce your own soul, that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. You know, Christians will be observing Christmas once again, by celebrating the birth of Jesus, the birth of the Messiah. And surely, as is mentioned here, He is the good news that brings or causes great joy. I believe with the life of Jesus came two divine miracles. Number one is access to the forgiveness of sins. You know, that we, it's open to all. That's a miracle. But also, according to verse 35 there, it's, the, another miracle is that He reveals hearts. With the coming of Jesus, hearts are going to be revealed. And also giving us the possibility of transforming our hearts. They can be revealed and they can be transformed. You know, I did a little research this week and found out that the first ever heart uh, transplant surgery took place, it was first attempted in 1967 in South Africa. Uh, heart transplant, uh, the transplant surgery is relatively common today, more so. There's about 2,000 performed, over 2,000 in the United States alone. That's a, almost six per day, just in this country. Uh, the first one or two were not successful. I don't know, they measured it, you had to live a certain amount of time after. But the first one performed successfully happened two years later, 1969, by the same surgeon who did the first one. His name was Dr. Christian Barnard. And he transplanted a human heart into a dentist, Dr. Philip Blayberg. After the transplant and the dentist was recovering and coming to, uh, Dr. Barnard decided 
he would take, the, the guy was kind of a fellow, you know, healthcare provider. He took his heart and put it in a container and brought it over to him in the bed and showed him his heart. And they sat on the hospital bed together examining this scarred, thickening, dead, useless heart. And Dr. Barnard said to Dr. Blayberg, do you realize you are the first person in the history of mankind to sit and look at your own dead heart? Mm. I thought about bringing a picture of a heart after transplant, and I thought, no, that's just, no.